Thanks, Gary. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. In this first segment of our program, we're discussing Dave Hunt's book, Seeking and Finding God, a book that he wrote primarily as a follow-up to send to people that he met on airplanes or in other places where serious discussions conversations really about God developed with those who seemed to be truly seeking after God. And Dave, you write in chapter 4, I'll quote, it is astonishing how many millions of otherwise seemingly intelligent people are willing to risk their eternal destiny upon less evidence than they would require for buying a used car. Is that the case? Hmm. Well, most people, or sometimes there are careless people. Of course, the used car salesman can talk you into things, Mm -hmm. tell you some lies and so forth, misrepresentations. I have a friend who just bought a business and somehow didn't uh, look carefully enough, and it was all misrepresented. And now he's consulting a lawyer. How do you get out of it? But if you had into eternity, and you've been believing lies, I don't know, there's no lawyer out there that you can consult. In fact, it's your fault. So, uh, Tom, I, I meet people all the time that like this. One of the arguments I would use with them is, well, you're a businessman, you're intelligent, you went to school, you planned your career, you took your major, and you, you, know, you took your training, and uh, now you're looking to advance in your career, and one day you're heading for retirement, you hope. What have you done about when retirement ends in death? That's an embarrassing question. A little silence, well, um, I haven't looked that far ahead. Well, you, uh, you might consider it, because... I can tell you, better than most people I sit next to because I'm so much older, it just goes. I don't know where. And Tom, you've got, what, 18 years to catch up on me, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you would say, where did it go? Sure. I can't even remember. Uh, And it's gone. It's like a vapor, James says. Okay, so it's amazing I'm going to spend eternity. It's much longer than this life, and we can prove it. Why don't people prepare for eternity? Good question. Yeah. Dave, um, you have Thomas Hobbes here, you know, a mathematician, philosopher of the 17th century. And, um, you know, you note that uh, he spent his whole life looking at the social system, looking right. how man lives, looking mm-hmm. at uh, and really in noticing uh, the evil within man and trying to resolve some of those issues. But uh, you have a quote here by him. He says, now I'm about to take, this is what, as death was approaching, he said, now I'm about to take my last voyage, a great leap in the dark. It's a terrible way to go into eternity, Tom. Why would you? You wouldn't take a leap in the dark on this earth. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would be very careful. So let's get some lights on here. I'm not going to jump. Mm-hmm. Uh, I once was lost. Well, I got lost because I was in a forest, heavy forest, where the, the big storm had gone through there 50 years ago, uprooted the trees. These are huge pines and, and Douglas fir and left holes where the roots had come out, and I am I made my way to the top, and I fell in a hole, and I must have hit my head, because after I laboriously made my way to what I thought was the other side, the stream was running in the wrong direction. <laughs> I had gone down the same way, okay? Well, I came to, and I had no flashlight, I came to the end of some logs, and I don't know what's down there. Uh, 
And um, I'm not going to take a leap, but here's Thomas Hobbes. He's leaping into eternity. Mm. And Dave, for some of our uh, listeners, viewers, uh, for the past, well, the past number of weeks, we went over the options. Uh, some people say, well, there's nothing at the end, so who cares? It's just when you're dead, you're dead. Now, we've, mm-hmm. we've dealt with those issues. But then I think we've established, yes, there is an eternity in front of every living being. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, but Dave, what about people who say, well, I've got my religion to fall back on. Uh, you know, there are lots of religions, lots of ideas, everything from Valhalla to the happy hunting ground to uh, uh, nirvana, moksha, you know, uh, all these things. How do you know that your religion is right? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, They contradict one another. Most religions do, unless they're pretty close to Christianity, and then they're talking about Catholicism, for example. You you were Catholic. You you know that a Catholic doesn't even know where he's going. Probably going to be purgatory. Well, that's the hope. Uh, right. If, if, if indeed purgatory is a reality, which the scriptures don't right, support right. that. Uh, but uh, how, do you, how can you be sure as a Catholic that you're not going to commit a mortal sin just before you die? You can't. The Pope couldn't. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about it. We have quotes from uh, archbishops and so on. That's the sin of presumption, at least it used to be. You know. Well, I quoted in, I don't know whether it's in this book, probably not in another one. I quoted Cardinal O'Connor from New York, and this was from the uh, Wall Street Journal. And they quoted him as saying, I don't know where I'm going when I die. The Pope, that was John Paul II then, the Pope doesn't know, neither does Mother Teresa know. Well, I would say if the Pope doesn't know where he's going, I mean, What about his followers? Uh, The pope was just here, the new pope. He did uh, bless, uh, leave a blessing for peace and so forth. It's not going to bring peace. Uh, Now, if they don't even know where they're going when they die, how how can you be sure? Well, they know where they want to go, but there's no assurance. Right. That's the the belief of Roman Catholicism. Right. The problem is they're trusting the church to get them there. And Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. Now, you better, Tom, I was sitting next to a couple of Catholics, husband and wife, and on the plane, they got a little upset because I, they thought I was a priest studying the Bible and so forth. And um, which, Dave, certainly right, that doesn't happen right, right, too right, often. Right. Not that be there aren't prayer, exceptions, but prayer, they would be exceptions. Be a prayer book. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe they didn't look closely. They thought it was a prayer book, but uh, they uh, wanted to know: are, are you a priest? Oh, you're a pastor. No, what are you doing? Well, I I'm doing some research, and uh, I said I can tell you're Catholics, and in fact I. I have right here in my file a letter from a Catholic lady. Uh, Well, she'd been married for 30 years. They had five children. Her husband divorced her, and he got an annulment. Um, And I said, you know, your church gives 60-some thousand annulments uh, a year. Now, uh, if they don't don't even, can't tell the difference between a divorce and an annulment, and they make exceptions for certain people, how can you be sure that? How can you be sure that they're right when they tell you how to get to heaven? And uh, you could also say, and and they were angry. Uh, okay, we don't want to talk about this anymore. It's like a person says, "Don't confuse me with facts. My mind is made up." It's a very uncomfortable subject, and death is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Well, then maybe we better face it. Mm-hmm. Well, Dave, uh, For more information is... about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website 